So we have another CNN voter panel with Alison Camerota that I want to take a look at. I always find these super fascinating, even if it's a really small sample size. I do think that it gives us a nice snapshot as to what some voters are thinking, at least like what the normies are thinking in terms of politics, for lack of a better word. Um, now, I haven't seen this one. This is, uh, I guess it's from late September, I want to say, maybe mid-September. So it's a little bit outdated. Nonetheless, I do want to know what these voters are thinking in terms of, you know, Biden, Trump, third parties, where their heads are at, because I think that these types of um, conversations are important because as leftists, it helps us determine how to talk to people, helps us get out of our bubbles, helps us, you know, craft a message that is tailored to people who aren't glued to politics nonstop, like uh, you or myself. Uh, I haven't seen this yet, so we're going into this blind. I've skimmed it, but for the most part, I don't know what to expect. Um, if you've seen any of my previous videos where I talk about these voter panels, uh, basically every single one of them, with the exception of like one or two, has completely demolished my faith in humanity, so I'm hoping this one won't actually crush my spirit that much. Nonetheless, I'm hoping for the best, but fully expecting the worst. So uh, take it away, Allison. Just tell me, what is the issue that is, is driving you to the polls um, in November? Quite frankly, um tired of turning on the news and watching people look like me being slaughtered for sport. Yeah, I really that makes sense. At the point now where I don't, I don't want to have to keep explaining to my kids like why they have to move differently because of the color of their skin. My son is 14 and I fear for my son sometimes because, you know, just because of the way he looks. And that should not be a reality in 2020, but here we are. I'm just ready for somebody to actually like do what they say they're going to do. And you don't think that that's President Trump? Absolutely not. No. My top issue. I mean, yeah, I think that what she's saying is perfectly valid and reasonable. Um, yeah, this is this is something that you know, you'd hope to hear something that really is a huge issue. Like you want to hear the things that we talk about on this program. You know, you want to, you want to hear from other people who aren't glued to politics. Yeah, these things are important to me. You know, you're not missing the mark or misreading the room. So, I mean, what she said there, how does that not resonate with you? You know, she has a 14 year old son and she's literally concerned that he'll be murdered extrajudicially. That's a difficult word by the police. I mean, that that's heartbreaking. That's so heartbreaking. This might crush my soul, but like in a different way, because it's just, that really is, you know, a terrible thing that nobody should have to deal with. Uh, it's similar to the young lady right before me. I'm tired of seeing uh, this country racially divided. Um, we haven't de dealt with the original sin Which of this Trump country. Which makes worse. Um, and I think that if we don't start to deal with that, uh, we're gonna have a bigger problem on our hands, and I think that uh, uh, President Trump has proven that he's not the man to deal with that, yep. uh, those issues, and we see that our country is in tor turmoil. Um, so, I'm 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 betting that uh, we are going to be able to make some headway uh, with uh, candidate Biden. My top issue mm. is. I mean, I'm not holding my breath, but like. It, what they're saying, it's valid. I mean, how could you not be exhausted? How could you not, like, be tired of the divisiveness that Trump sows in society? Like, his policies in practice aren't that different from other Republicans, but the impact that he has on culture is outsized, you know, compared to other Republicans. The way that he's able to pit Americans against each other, it's almost like he, he's an expert at doing that. So, I mean, what they're saying is 100% valid, and I, I totally... Uh, sympathize with them. Uh, it's, it's, I want to return to some kind of a status quo. It is great yeah. to renegotiate some uh, trade deals that I don't think were right. But hey, if you frame that on the chaos and racial division that we're living today, I don't want it. I'm going to respond a little differently. Uh, that guy kind of reminds me of one of the um, centrist voters, and I'm maybe like 
reading way into this and overgeneralizing, but like one of the centrist voters who would be protesting at the women's march with a sign that says if Hillary won, we'd be out to brunch because he wants to see a return to the status quo. Or maybe like he was anti-establishment back in 2016, but he saw that, you know, the anti-establishment choice that ended up winning made people long for the days of what they perceived to be normality. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I would want to press him further on that if I were Alison Camerota. Maybe she did, but they didn't play it. But um, yeah, so far, I mean, this is all reasonable to me so far. From the guests, um, I think the president is making every effort uh, to do his best for people of color and people that are not of color. We can help the current president um, make things better for all of us. So what? I just think that the president is bringing us together because what? Know, his... Wait, wait, you just said that the president is bringing us together? Even if you are the biggest MAGA chud Kool-Aid drinker ever, there's no way you believe that he's bringing people together. Like, even Trump supporters that have been in these panels before, they admit, okay, I get that, like, he's not, like, your usual politician and he's a little bit bombastic and, you know, he can be this divisive at times, but look, at the end of the day, he cares about people. This dude has, like, convinced himself of what he wants to believe. Like, you're not even living in reality. And you're saying that Trump is trying to bring people together? Like, th this is, like, one of those people that I was telling you about that are just too far gone. You're not ever going to win him over. If he literally thinks that Trump is bringing people together, too far gone. Straight up stupid. And when I go to those events, I feel comfortable. I don't feel threatened. You, you feel comfortable at Trump events with other Trump supporters where you're all in the same, like, bubble and agreement. Of course you're going to feel, like, comfortable with other people. And you're probably going to feel, like, more welcomed at Trump rallies because Trump doesn't have a lot of voters of color who support him. He's performing very poorly against... Uh, with black people, among black people. So, like, whenever there's, like, black people at his rallies, he tries to get them, like, directly behind him. So that way it makes it seem like he has more black support than he does in actuality. So when they see you there, they probably welcome you with open arms because they're trying to, you know, fight this narrative that Trump is uh, racist and can't attract black voters. And it's not even narrative. Like, it's, it's just the truth. But that's why you probably feel more welcomed. But, I mean, even if that isn't the case, you're, of course, going to feel welcome with people you agree with more. Like, obviously, that's not evidence that Trump is bringing people together. Oh, my God, you're so stupid. And, and, and basically what he's saying is that, you know, let's make our country that we all live in great and that's including everyone i think he's oh doing okay a, a... oh i gotta take a moment to try to digest that trump is uh, trying to bring people together he's including everyone trump is being inclusive holy shit that that is probably going to be the dumb dumb of uh of the panel there's always like one idiot that they bring on just to like fuck with people to entertain us they always find some person that's like a psychopath like on the last panel uh, there was a Trump supporter. She, I think she's the president of Latinos for Trump. I'm going to blank on her name. But she was like this weird, like loud anti-masker who claimed that she has a medical problem. She can't wear masks. She was insane. Like, I don't think that guy's as bad, uh, this guy. However, I will say that, like, he's probably the stupid person of the uh, of the panel. But we'll see. We haven't heard from the other two, which I'm assuming are Trump supporters. Phenomenal job and... Um... I'm, he has my vote. Absolutely. Absolutely. But what part is he doing a phenomenal job on? That yeah. he What's the... fights for my rights so I can most definitely make my own decisions. That's my number one thing. Like, uh, So what rights in particular? You can make your own decision. Um, your rights as a woman with regard to like your own bodily autonomy? Is Are you saying that he's fighting for your rights there? <laughs> I don't believe this, like, at all, just so you know. I mean, he gassed peaceful protesters, his attorney general did for a photo op. Is he really fighting for rights, or is that just what Fox News and OAN is telling you to believe? I feel like um, in what living issue? here in California, a lot of things have been stripped. Oh, she's, she's in California, so it doesn't matter. A lot of my rights have been stripped, for instance, like about the masks. Uh, you know, of course, oh, yeah. Oh, no. She's an anti-masker. Oh, they're the dumbest of all of Trump supporters. Oh, I was hoping that there wouldn't be one on this panel. Oh, fuck my life. She should wear a mask, and why isn't he wearing a mask? Oh, well, wait, wait, hang on. Is she criticizing Trump now for not wearing a mask? Okay, I'll I'll eat crow. I'll, I'll admit that I was wrong. I make my own decisions. That's my number one thing. Like, I feel like um, in what living issue? here in California, a lot of things have been stripped 
a lot of my rights have been stripped, for instance, like about the masks. Uh, <laughs> of course, yeah, you should wear a mask. And why isn't he wearing a mask? Well, that's his that's his opinion, right? Isn't that his 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 choice? Lady, what the fuck? Are you si Oh my god. So like she makes the uh he's fighting for my liberty argument and the example she uses is masks. But simultaneously, she's, you know, she wants him to wear a mask. But at the same time, if he doesn't, that's his liberty. Except this is a pandemic and a virus doesn't know about liberty. It doesn't have like a party affiliation. It's not like you exercising your liberty if you're a dumbass and you don't wear a mask because guess what liberty for you ends at your neighbor's nose like the right you have like the freedom to swing your fist ends before it hits your neighbor's nose and that extends to masks so you aren't like making a choice individually uh to not wear masks that only affects you like if you don't wear a mask you're spreading your disgusting germs on everyone else by you not wearing a mask, you are infringing on other people's liberties by potentially exposing them to a very contagious, deadly disease right now that we're all trying to fight. So the liberty argument is not applicable to this conversation. And by trying to use it, it shows how stupid and naive and gullible, quite frankly, you are. And if you think that Trump should wear a mask more, like, why are you making the liberty argument? Like, this is basically what Trump said, right? Trump in his interview with Chris Wallace, if I'm remembering correctly, he said he likes masks, but he doesn't want a national mask mandate because he thinks people should have the right. Again, like, you having the right to not wear a mask, you infringe on other people's rights and liberties to not want to contract COVID fucking 19. So anyone who makes this argument, like, they have shit for brains and they are literally stupid if they think this. Like, you are so fucking stupid. You're so far gone. You're irredeemable. Like, who believes this? Like, Americans just believe everything is my rights. So if you go to, like, fucking McDonald's and you ask for a milkshake and the machine is down, you literally think that, like, your civil liberties have been violated. That That's like the way that Americans have been, uh, you know, uh, led to believe that they, they're entitled to everything. My liberty, my freedom. When it's it's not. Like, this isn't that complicated. I don't know why you're overcomplicating it. But I, I need to shut the fuck up and let her talk. Um, though you wear a mask because you're conscientious about your neighbors, you want the freedom to not wear a mask? Um, yeah. <laughs> Allison, <laughs> Allison, like, her head is going to explode. Let me go back. Let me watch her reaction. <laughs> this, this reaction right there says it all. Like, her eyes are about to roll back into her head she like is trying to process the stupidity that she's hearing about your neighbors you want the freedom to not wear a mask uh yeah yeah yes yes i want i don't want it because i'm such fucking like stupid a, like um you have to and it's like a bad thing if you don't it's a pandemic dumbass oh my fucking god people it's not like we're asking people to fucking like do something so inconvenient you're just asked to put a fucking piece of cloth on your goddamn face like the anti-mask stuff like anyone who's anti-mask i just immediately assume that they're like the stupidest in america like the the lowest of the low in terms of stupidity because that i mean honestly i don't know what to say i'm repeating myself because i'm just gonna rant on this lady she's the dumbest i take it back i apologize to the weird glasses guy this lady is definitely the dumbest um even this guy who's probably a Trump supporter knows she's a dumbass. Okay, Dan, your top issue. I think my top issue Go ahead, really Dan. is about the economy, specifically my economy and my state. Because, you know, I look at what, what Biden's proposing on the, the tax increases on the wealthy. It's I'll just stop him right there. I'm guessing that this guy who saw Biden's tax plan doesn't know what a marginal tax rate is. He thinks that his taxes will be taxed at 62%, not knowing that it doesn't apply to him most likely unless he makes over four hundred thousand dollars per year but biden's tax plan kicks into effect on your four hundred and uh first thousand dollar uh, i just fucked up that number but after you make four hundred thousand dollars every dollar after that is taxed at 62 percent but like people don't get taxes either they're purposefully obtuse or they they think they're going to be rich someday unless this guy's actually rich then I'd say, okay, well, I mean, at least that makes sense logically. But let's let's hear him out first before I uh, blab on. 
It's all about soaking the rich. You know, I don't, there are a lot of things Good. I don't like about Trump. I mean, I wish I could cut off his thumbs and he would stop tweeting and it would just be quiet. But <sighs> you know, the truth of the matter is, policy wise, he's not done that bad. And if we want to fix racial injustice in this country, one of the best things, the foundation, is fix the economy. And I think we have a better chance of doing that going forward than with Joe Biden. Okay. Basically, he's admitting that, you know, Trump, in terms of Republicans, he isn't that bad. If he didn't do the mean tweets, he'd basically be perfect. But he's basically making a class reductionist argument that, hey, everyone, if, you know, everyone's material conditions were met, everything would be copacetic. There'd be, you know, no racial injustice. Now, the economic desperation certainly does lead to more racism. It exacerbates the problem. But hypothetically speaking, let's say that uh, the economy was doing better. Purchasing power was up. Black Americans actually had wealth. Would that lead to less racism in America? Would racism go away? No. Now, maybe if, you know, we pressed him on this, he'd make, you know, a more nuanced argument. Um, but basically, you can't just say, oh, well, you, you only exclusively focus on the economy and then racism itself will get better. You can't, like, these things are inextricably linked. You have to fight them simultaneously. You can't just pretend like only addressing... Uh, the economic issues is going to lead to racism going away because that's not the way that it works. You know, this whole war in the suburbs saying that Joe Biden's talking about, we're already kind of seeing that. Joe Biden's not talking about that. Trump is talking about suburbs. that. I mean, are you listening? Yeah. What has Joe Biden said that is a war on the suburbs? Yeah, it's it's uh, if you go even on his website, you go through and read the policies, right? He hasn't even um, read the policies. Like the Home Act. There are some there are some things in the bottom of that with respect to local zoning, like basically taking control of local zoning and saying, well, you can't do it because if you have local zoning, then you're you're excluding everybody. And it's a the suburban shit is basically let's call it what it is. It's a dog whistle. It's a racist dog whistle that Trump uses. He's speaking directly to white suburban voters when he talks about this shit. And the fact that this guy fell for it is kind of embarrassing. Very heavy headed approach to taking over local politics. That's the way I view it. Any of you motivated by what's happening with the Supreme Court? Show of hands. Okay, so four of you. That is, you had your hand up first. What do you see? I see hypocrisy. Um, I see, you know, the Republican Congress is basically uh, doing everything they, they said they wouldn't do. <laughs> um, you know, you, you, this is too fast to put, to put someone in the seat. Um, the American people aren't going to get a say in it. It's basically going to be a rush job. Has it made you more motivated? Um, I think that it definitely made me change my local vote in my Senate race here. How so? Previously, uh, I was considering uh, possibly voting for Lindsey Graham. And why were you going to vote what? for Lindsey Graham? He has done some things with the uh, with the ports here in Charleston, uh, creating you know some some jobs um, here in South so Carolina. So pork. I, I'm very, Whoever you uh, get is going to give you pork I mean, that's, if that's, that's what you're concerned with, my jobs. dude. But it, this this fella is just not a man of his word. Okay. It's a weird election year. I mean, it just feels like everybody is like doing the absolute most to try to like push through whatever it is that they want to happen, and it's not always in our favor. I feel like so. I agree. I see a lot of hypocrisy. Uh, I see them. I, I remember very vividly what happened in 2016 when Scalia died. Uh, and I remember the comments of all the... And, and uh, to, to some extent, I, I agree with them. At that point, now they are all turning around on their... pivoting on their own position to their favor. There's a lot of hypocrisy. That's interesting because I wasn't sure that, like, the normies would remember the 2016 thing, but he kind of agreed with Republicans. And now that they're, you know, violating what they said, I, that is having an effect. This guy's voting for Biden in Florida. That's that's really interesting because I, I felt like, you know, the GOP, they can be as hypocritical as they want to be and never have to worry about losing voters so long as they pander uh, when it comes to cultural issues, you know, uh, abortion, for example, and the Supreme Court. So that's interesting that it actually is hurting them, their hypocrisy, at least like uh, with this sample of people on both sides right now unfortunately you know you you're gonna both sides of this really dude 
You're going to both sides this. He's like a Trump supporter that's kind of like an enlightened centrist who, back in 2016, was really enthusiastic about John Kasich, but, you know, he begrudgingly voted for Donald Trump. Um, but, you know, if Donald Trump just, you know, didn't do these mean tweets, I don't like this guy. Like, I don't know who I hate more because this guy's like the enlightened centrist and he should know better. I don't know. I don't know. This has come around many times. It happened in 2016. And at that time, Obama appointed somebody, which he should have. And the Senate should should have given uh, Garland a hearing. But they didn't. I do hope they appoint somebody to the to the bench who is not an activist either way and who believes in the precedent well, good of law. Luck. And as we move forward, that you know, we need to get that in place as soon as we can. Good That's luck, reasonable. bud. Good luck. Is that it? That's it. Okay, yeah. Um, I don't know how long this video is by now. But uh, look, I'll be honest, that wasn't the worst. Um, there's been far stupider people. It's just, it's interesting to see where the average voter is because, you know, we're calling, we're, we're all kind of in our bubbles, right? Like, if you're online and you're a leftist, like, you're always hearing people kind of reinforcing your own opinion. And I'm sure that the same is true to an extent on the right. So it's nice to hear from people who aren't always hyper engaged in politics. And it's nice to know that, you know, the things that happen, like blatant hypocrisy with Republicans and the Supreme Court, it does have an effect. It is hurting them. I mean, this guy, he was going to support Lindsey Graham just because of the pork barrel projects that Lindsey Graham produces for South Carolina. But Lindsey Graham's hypocrisy ended up uh, hurting him with this voter. That's interesting. Uh, same with this guy, too. Um, so, yeah, this is really interesting. The anti-mask lady uh, really got under my skin. I think she's probably the worst here. Uh, having said that, though... Um, <laughs> That's my thoughts. I don't know if we'll have another voter panel before the election, but if so, uh, I will enthusiastically cover it because I do think these are entertaining, even if sometimes they can be a little bit uh, soul-crushing. Girly Mike Fettuccini needs your support on Patreon. What a loser. Visit patreon.com slash humanist report to support the low ratings humanist report. Sad. My views are much higher.